Yeah, it's almost dark. Thank God. There's a new rail bridge I spent all day under, waiting for a better train. There's a black car or SUV that went underneath it. Looked kind of official, so, and he was driving too slow for comfort, so I came and moved over. A little more discreet. Right at the hedge line. Big poplar. Or cottonwood, I mean. So I'll just squat down and sit on my bag and wait for another train. Well, good morning, everybody. Yeah, last night. I just got tired of waiting, and I said, you know what, I could use a good night's sleep motionless. I'll just roll out and forget about catching out and get a good night's sleep and get caught up on sleep. We had a cold spell, a cold front move in. You can see where I was laid out. And it just started getting light about an hour ago. I hacked my way back, hacked my way back. Hack, 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 that's why the axe and machete is so, so good to have. Found this old, old tree, like it's falling over at one time and just kept living. Old cottonwood. But somebody's been here before me. They left a bag of instant rice hanging in the tree. And they left their sign, I don't know, by accident or... I kind of like that anything green. <laughs> anything green. But there was a, a tent canopy that was up here laying right about there. So I just kind of threw it out of the way to, so it wouldn't attract attention. But this is typical hobo jungle. Anyway, I'm still debating on whether to go in town for coffee. Uh, there's just a westbound go. So that means it, the next siding is about 25 miles west of here, so it should be at least an hour before an eastbound train comes. Cause that's a single track. So if one just left out before I started this video, it's going to be at least an hour if one's in that side and waiting to come back. But I mean, the gentleman that made these gloves for me, he sewed up, cut off the two fingers and sewed them up for me. That way I could wear, wear them and they fit perfect. I'd have brought them those typical dollar eighty-eight Walmart cotton garden gloves are good enough for now, but tonight it's gonna get even colder, so I broke these out. Glad I brought my winter stuff. I went ahead and threw on my thermals too. Cause you never know. This time of year the weather changes up here. Might be 90 one day, it might be 40 the next. Right on the Canadian border. Yeah, it's been 10 minutes since that last scene. Yep. Hobo Shadow. That's looking west. There's 
camp. Looking east. Yeah, I think I'm gonna run in for some coffee. I heard another train horn, but I think it's another westbound. There's no way an eastbound could have made it. There's no siding for 25 miles. So I'm gonna get hoofing it. A lot of pheasant. I kept hearing them and I thought, what kind of sound? It's like a grouse. That is a westbound, I think. Where's it coming from? Yeah, that's a westbound. See, being deaf in one ear, you can't tell direction. Yeah. So you gotta spin around if, they, if it, that horn blows again, then you can judge where it's coming from. That's bad about having monocular hearing. When you hear one horn honk, you know it's a train, but you can't tell what direction unless you turn your head 180 degrees and then it blows its horn again. Then, you know, because being completely deaf in my right ear, you cannot, you don't have stereo hearing, so you don't, you can't, your brain can't judge the distance. That's how the brain works when it hears a sound in both ears. The brain can detect the speed of sound from one eardrum to the other from the time the sound hits one ear to the next. It can judge that small distance. It takes time for that sound to go from one ear to the other. 700 and something miles an hour brain can judge what direction that sound came from but with one ear you can't so you gotta why you gotta turn your head 180 degrees and of course it ain't gonna help unless that same sound makes that sound again hobo shadow all right let's go get some coffee all right we are on our way back they had some breakfast burritos, sausage, potato, egg, and cheese in there. And run over me there, dear. And I got a Powerade, a coffee, and a bunch of napkins to get a little fire going when we get down there. Kind of warm the camp up a little bit. Take a smoke bath. Uh, it's better to smell like smoke than uh, armpit baby wipes and <laughs> body powder. Well, I tell you, when you wear them long johns, you got to wear some talcum powder. It sure helps. Well, that's a good sign. That train we heard blowing, that second one. Hadn't gone by yet, means he's still down there at the crew change office. So, that means he's only waiting for an eastbound. So, hey look, Hobo Shadow, all the way. Uh, yeah. If you haven't already, Go to shoestringarmy.com and check out my Hobo Shadow shirts. On sale now. Yeah, this is just an old rip track here. Goes down to that silo. They load grain into them. And they usually pick them up on a junk train run. 
and there's several hundred of these silos along this line and all the feed gets brought to them this is a small one here but after they pick up so many they put them all together into what's called a unit train or a grain uh, shuttle nothing but grain every car but some grain silos are so huge that they can load a full 130 cars at once so they go from that point of loading of somewhere up in the midwest up here all the way to like galveston texas or charleston south carolina or jacksonville or tampa and get loaded onto an overseas container ship and export it overseas most of that grain you see that's all just one big long train one grain car after the other that's called a grain shuttle and it goes from point a to point b only it doesn't do any switch outs or anything unless it's got a bad order but usually bnsf Back in the BN days, they had the BN 196 and the BN 195 trains. They went from up here, off the High Line, all the way to Galveston. You could ride down through Houston and uh, down through Temple, Texas and all. You could ride straight to the Gulf Coast. They exported that grain there in Galveston, put it on ships. Oh, why couldn't we get a grinder like that? Nice one. But anyway, yep, we're almost back at camp, so I better kind of get off the line and over and then sneak back in. I don't want to attract attention to where I'm going. Hobo Shadow! All right, let's see if we can't sneak up on some pheasant. You'll hear them fly off. They're kind of like pigeons. When they flap their wings real hard, air rushes in and out of their lungs, and they make a noise. Like when a pheasant takes off to flight, every time it pushes its muscles down to flap its wing downward, air gets sucked in and then when he brings his wings up to get another uh strike of air to force down he he breathes the opposite way i thought we were going to scare some up here but when they take off they go <laughs> kind of like when a pigeon takes off you hear that But I heard a lot just a while ago. Should have had the camera rolling. Yeah, we'll get a fire going. Hobo Shadow. <laughs> All right. We're just going to get a little fire going, just enough to stave off. Believe it or not, there's some pretty vicious mosquitoes. Uh, it covered my face last night, but also that smoke kind of helps you, makes you smell a little bit better. Well, that's why I hate these. Uh, hard to hold my... Hands kind of numb. You always try to start with the lightest, lightest wood you can find. The driest, smallest stuff. And let it catch. And then once that catches, it'll start burning the bigger stuff. 
Try to keep your wood from touching it, so create smoke. I don't know if I'm allowed to use the term or not, but these are also known as squaw fires. Back in the day, the Native Americans would. build one just enough to stave off the cold and uh, yet not attract attention. You can get that going with one match if you do it right. I know it looks big now but that'll burn down to some nice cold And there's nothing around here that's going to catch fire to worry about. But anyway, I got me, uh, did a, carrying a coffee pot around. I went and got one of these. Hate spending that much, but also would have, if I'd have brought a coffee pot that thing would have bent up in that hole in haver plus they make so much clanking noise anyway we'll take a smoke bath at least still nothing but see how it's burned down a little now you get it that white is a bunch of coals now and once that bigger stuff gets burnt down the flame will go down and it'll be just a hot bed of coals to sit around no smoke nothing if you were out there walking you wouldn't even be able to tell unless it was night come on train finally warmed up i could put my hat on come out with my beard a little bit Wake up more, got that coffee in me, feel better. Hmm. I should have brought my little uh, metal pot. I got a little metal pot. I could have cooked up some of that rice. But I got, these were on clearance. I thought they were just water. But turns out it was carbonated with lime. See, I didn't even notice that with my bad eyes. <laughs> but it ain't got no sugar or anything in it. It's just slightly lime tasting water. So I refilled the rest of my big bottle with it. So it'll have a hint of lime in it. And I got a breakfast burrito for later. It's one of them... Uh, Sausage, egg, and cheese. Ah. Fussing with these stupid bags. But, yeah, that weighs a good 12 ounces. Uh, I'll keep them bags. Yep, here's another eastbound, but... No floor grainers. And plus it's empty. What they call a shuttle train, as I mentioned earlier. Grain shuttle. Yep. Sometimes you have to wait for two, three days in some cases. Before you get the right one with the right ride. Uh, in this case going on 30 hours I've been here uh, in Williston but there will be a train that eventually comes along with the perfect ride on it just not this one and even if it did have a ride it's gonna go to some 
big giant grain silo somewhere up here in North Dakota or Minnesota so you're not going to go far on that before they fill it up with grain to go right back to the west coast to get exported overseas at Port of Vancouver or near Kent or Seattle, Portland, Oregon area. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of pheasants out there. It's kind of marshy out there. See all the cattails. Ever since I started talking, the uh, pheasants stopped talking too, so. <laughs> they make a, uh, never heard a pheasant. They make a real distinct sound. Yep, you can tell he's empty here, hear him echoing as he pulled. So he's going to a grain silo not far. So even if I had a ride, I could find, find somewhere to sit on the porch. There's no floor on these. It, it ain't going far anyway. So i got to wait on a junker. Or, in this case, if there's an IM that does have a bottom in it, it's mine. I've just let my fire die out. It warmed up to about 80 right now. Tell me there's gonna, not going to be one ride on this whole thing. Well, the good thing is, if you did ride something like that and the bull seen you, he, no way he could say you were trying to steal anything. First time in my life in 33 years of riding that I've ever seen an entire empty I am nothing but spine. Whoa, what a waste. So are these like made from where and being shipped to have a container put on them? Maybe that's what they are. They're brand new made trailer bottoms going to another company to have the, the container put on them. I've never seen just spines, nothing but spines the entire length. I guess you could ride up underneath there, but whew, you'd have to strap yourself down with your belt. Look at that. See, that's what I mean about here, how they pull up about a half mile to crew change, so they stop out where I'm at. Huh. Boy, if it was night, if it was dark, I'd ride right up behind them tandems, behind them wheels right there. You always get these rides, these night rides during the day. At least we got some filtered sunshine, some high cirrus clouds moving in from the Pacific. The jet streams changing them more northerly. Means a high pressure dome's building again. See the high cirrus clouds? I don't know if you can or not. 
Yep. The biggest thing I've learned in 33 years of riding is patience. There'll always be another train. Just try not to get in too much of a hurry. If you are, then you don't need to be riding trains. <laughs> get out there and hitchhike or take Greyhound or whatever. If you're really trying to get somewhere. But yeah, see that tandem, I could ride right behind it and not be seen at night. Anyway, I may have to go grab some pork chops and stuff, cook up something later. Now, another eastbound you can't ride. Ethanol, ethanol, ethanol. Or you can see the tank. Every single car is a tank. Except for the buffer car on each end. They always put a buffer car behind the locomotives. It's usually full of sand, in case there ever is a derail that puts a buffer between that fuel and those engines. Lessens the likelihood of a fire and also burning up the crew, if there ever is a derail. Could ride up there at the call that the crow's nest I've only done it once but back in my 20s call these bomb trains I heard people call them sausage trains. More or less is a bomb train. Nothing but fuel. And those are loaded too. Back to my prison camp. Well, here we are at the end of this second day. Uh, I'm debating on whether to go get more water. You sit there and you eat up all your food and drink up all your water waiting 30 hours. And then you take a 20 minute walk to go re-up. And that's when your train comes. By God, it happens every single time. I think I'm going to go ahead and do it just to test the theory, uh, just to show you. Uh, make sure I got sprayed down good again. Because I got a few sugar bites already. Uh, four or five of them on the back of the arm. Thank God I was sprayed down. It could have been a lot worse. A lot worse. Uh, one here on the neck. And a couple on the shoulders. And four or five on the back of the elbow. But thank God none on my legs. Or elsewhere, you know. Uh, well, maybe it was because of reverse psychology. Just because I said... On screen, watch a train come while I'm gone getting groceries like it does every time. And it actually didn't for the first time. <laughs> In years. But they set a lot of water down there. That's all they had was that airhead. 
and that glacier changed their bottles they don't have tape on them anymore and i got a loaf of french bread and some potted meat and some more deviled ham that french bread i'm gonna have to really keep tight because the humidity is like 25 percent and that thing's going to turn into a brick i'll have to dip it in water in order to eat it Boy, I don't know where all these mosquitoes come from all of a sudden. There hadn't been any mosquitoes except all of a sudden now. That marsh, maybe, but there weren't any bothering me yesterday or last night or all day. All of a sudden, I'm getting swamped. Ooh, we can't believe they had to build this whole bridge. Spent all this money just for this little creek. I mean, unless it really flash floods down here really bad. I mean, because, I mean, <gasps> help! I can't swim! I can't swim! I'm drowning! Oh, oh, wait. Ah, uh, uh, that wasn't that bad. See? A whole bridge for that little baby creek. So it must really, really flash flood gully here. Had to make sure no one was following me back. Always oh, these small towns, you gotta watch your back, make sure you're not being followed back. Man, I ain't got a free arm to swat mosquitoes with. Well, for the first time in years, actually go and get food and the train doesn't come. Now, I'm ready to ride a long ways if I get the right train all the way to Chicago. There's that French bread. Got some more coffee and another Powerade. And a potted meat and a couple of cans of sardines. But we are back. I'm ready to go. Let's roll. This is how it really is. The waiting game. Boy, no more than I get back and it does come. I just finished packing my pack full of that food and water. I better get my gear ready. This might be my ride. Yep. Uh, that wasn't it either. Nowhere to ride, no floors. Not even a mini well. Uh, it's pretty good climb up that no footing 45 degree embankment sliding down rocks two gallons of water in one hand that full bucket the other and probably 45 pounds on my back now with that winter pack uh, you can hear him now that's him blowing now towards the back he he had some look like them old timey ribbed ones with bottoms, but they were all full, so it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, always another train. This is just to show you how darn hard it is. <laughs>
train I just got off of. Uh, he didn't crew change downtown. He didn't crew change by Amtrak. He came all the way to the Gavin Yard again. Way out by Surrey. Outside Minot again. So I had to walk in that soaking grass all the way through the field. Uh, I didn't see no bull, but I've seen plenty of workers. Highway 2 is somewhere over that hill. I can hear it. I just can't see it. <sighs> it's about a six mile walk back to town. Oh god. At least I didn't get busted. I thought we were going to make it here by day or before daybreak. And I for sure thought being on an IM we'd crew change downtown but he didn't and if I would have been a little better hidden I'd have just stayed on to Fargo but I was too out in the open better safe than sorry heck I could almost sleep out here for two or three hours till it warms up I think I'm gonna do that just roll out Get a couple of hours of nice, quiet sleep. No one will see me out here. Then come up with a plan. Oh, man. Well, it's a little after one. I slept for about five hours, I guess, here. I just got rolled up. Put some body powder on, you can tell. Put powder, a lot of it. <laughs> Just to soak up some, that moisture. Maybe help with them bug bites. But I'm gonna try and walk up. There's gotta be a fence row. Goes up to highway two. And I can walk left to Surrey, that little town, S-U-R-R-E-Y. There's got to be a little store there to get some fresh water. And then make my way back down and try and catch out east of Fargo next. And then uh, just stay on to Chicago. Well, I'll walk a little further. There goes uh, some type of truck. I think it's a work truck, but you can't tell. I'm ducked down. I'm just trying to make it to that fence line. I don't know what kind of what is it, uh, crop this is. Maize, maybe. I've never seen it in little packets like that. Pouches. It's the whole field of them. I'm walking down the line of them. There's like a farm road that runs along a fence line up to Highway 2 I'm trying to get to without being seen by the bull over there. Yeah, first store from the walk. Well, I'll tell you, if you don't crew change, if you're coming in from the west in Minot on the freight, and you don't crew change downtown by the library, and by Amtrak, you don't crew change down there, you're going out to the Gavin Yard in Surrey. So you got a six and a half mile walk from Surrey into Minot, and that's what I'm having to do. I finally reached a little store about a, oh, two and a half miles into my walk. Uh, yeah, Previously in the video where I'm riding across that big viaduct way up in the air in that last bit of riding footage That's a uh, I think a hundred and ninety foot trestle that goes above the ravine And it used to be made out of wood originally that trestle but a tornado destroyed it two times in history that trestle, that tornado went right down that valley and destroyed that 
trestle twice in history. But that's that trestle I went in, went over just right after sun up this morning. Oh, probably, I don't know, 10 minutes ago in this video. Anyway, I'm gonna go in and get some water and a Gatorade and continue my walk. I'm going downtown to where the old Sioux line used to cross the Great Northern there. It's CP crosses uh, BNSF now there. And see if I can't catch out there. Because all the stuff going on through to Fargo and Dilworth is uh, going to crew change down there. Just my stroke of luck. That's what you deal with out here. It ain't all a hunky dory. <laughs> a lot of walking involved but that's why you get good boots but anyway that's the plan anyway let me go get my power aid or gatorade and see how much further i gotta walk all right i finally made it at least i got down here before dark Yeah, somebody at that little store gave me a ride downtown, so that really helped. Saved about a four-mile walk. Yeah, this is a westbound grain train heading for the port of Vancouver. They're going to ship all that grain or corn or whatever it is. Uh overseas so it'll go through Pasco and Sandpoint everywhere I just went now this line here that goes up to Portal North Dakota and on into Moose Jaw Yard and that's outside Regina Saskatchewan and heading this way we'll take you to St. Paul pig's eye yard this is the old Sioux line here I remember the first time I rode this oh man it was like 40 something hours to get from Minot here to St. Paul it was that slow and rickety rackety back then but they really upgraded the track since then but yep it's just one hundred and like, yeah, maybe a hundred even, hundred, hundred and ten miles to the Canadian. No, nah, it's not even that far, probably. To Portal is probably a hundred and ten, but as a crow's flies, probably eighty miles. So he's being westbound. This grain train, he stopped like this he's got to be waiting on a uh, eastbound that trestle we came over this morning at sun up is about four or five miles out that's where we were like 190 foot above the ravine and this goes back towards the yard where I was at in Surrey the Gavin yard G-A-V-I-N like we got some high thicker high clouds moving in I don't know what the forecast is here but it's a little more humid so the rain chances may be higher and that's the library usually wait down there because they normally crew change just up beyond the bridge up there past Amtrak there's a crew change office that's normally where they stop unless you're on a really funky junky freight train you'll go on into the Gavin yard and get broke up because some of that stuff goes on to Grand Forks Bemidji and then to Superior Wisconsin or it'll go down to Minneapolis and then lacrosse and then chicago well maybe he got a new track order so he's got to back up behind the light and get the light reset and that'll be it for this video 
stumbling on the gravel. Don't forget to order your Hobo Shadows t-shirt shoestringarmy.com and other stuff. Goodbye, guys. I'll see you further east.